It's taking me quite a while to finally make the final measure healer video that I promised you guys a long time ago. And that is because I found it pretty difficult to motivate myself to make this video. Mostly because I find final measure a pretty boring gear set to talk about. Uh, I'm a numbers guy myself, if you hadn't noticed by now. And while with my other builds I can get the highest DPS or the fattest healing box or the thickest one-shot snipers. Uh, I can do all those things and then with final measure it's uh yeah you uh you defuse grenades and that's pretty much the whole gear set so that's not very uh exciting for me so to speak the thing is though is that so many people rely on their grenades to get kills in pvp hoping to stagger or stun the opponent and when fighting the whole server so many people will just spam nature away that this diffuse mechanic in combination with the strong buffs it gives to the team actually makes it so that this boring gear set is also one of the very best gear sets in the game. Now because Final Measure doesn't have any attributes that boost either skill power or damage, it can be pretty difficult to figure out how to build it, but I think that Final Measure works best as some sort of secondary healer hybrid that focuses very heavily on the first aid, much like the 1.6 tactician healer did. Which is how we have been running it pretty much since 1.7 went live, so yeah. This video is long overdue, but hey, I guess it's better late than never, right? So yeah, let's uh, let's begin. The two-piece gives the player 25% exotic damage resilience, the three-piece gives you 15% protection from elites, and the four-piece, as I said, can defuse a grenade once every eight seconds, which will then negate the effect and put whatever grenades you defused into your inventory. The 25% exotic damage resilience is pretty strong in my opinion, uh, exotic damage resilience protects you not only from grenade damage, if for example players throw more than one grenade within 8 seconds, but it also mitigates the damage from seeker mines, sticky bombs, fire turret, and most importantly, also the predator bleed, which then adds quite a bit to your survivability. Uh, the protection from elites, sure, it could be useful in some scenarios, but honestly, it is pretty throwaway in PvP, at least in my opinion, but then the 5 piece adds 15% more exotic damage resilience to that, and 15% more protection from elites, so I guess they stack up together and combined uh, they make you a little bit more tanky, even when you have lower toughness. The 6 piece then further plays into that grenade defuse feature that the 4 piece came with every time that you defuse a grenade now. You will not only get the grenade, get it back into your inventory, but you will also buff yourself and everybody within the squad within 30 meters. And these buffs, they are very, very powerful. Defuse a frag or a fire grenade, then you get 40% damage to the whole team. Defuse an EMP or a shock grenade, you get 40% more skill power to the whole team. And then a flashbang or a tear gas grenade, they give everybody 40% more armor. Now the main buff that you'll be getting will obviously be the damage buff, because everybody is going to be able to restock on frag grenades. Uh, when they die and go back to the checkpoint, and especially when fighting against multiple groups in a DZ or just a lot of individual players, this buff is going to be active pretty much all the time, which then adds a lot of damage to the team and kind of makes up for the damage that you're losing for running the final measure instead of another damage dealer in the squad. Uh, and of course you get the protective layer, so you're not going to get nade spammed as much. Now the way I built it is very similar to the Reclaimer Healer. 9000 electronics and then pour the rest into stamina. And the stat rolls are pretty much the same as well how you would expect them to be. The chest piece has skill haste, it has health and ammo capacity. Uh, the mask, it has skill power and burn resistance. The knee pads have health, shock, burn and disrupt resistance. The backpack has skill power and disrupt resistance. And I think that this is something that I have to mention quickly because usually following the best in slot guides you would of course want to get health here. but I myself, I'm a greedy fuck and I feel like that I can stay alive without the health rolls here. So I'm trying to squeeze a bit more healing out of the build through the skill power roll. I did the same thing on my reclaimer healer and it's been working out for me. You know, I'm almost never the one dying. So I'm going to keep doing this until it stops working for me. The gloves are pretty standard. Uh, assault rifle damage, skill haste and critical hit chance. The holster, uh, guess what, guess what, also skill haste, and then the mods are all electronics with skill haste on them as well. Uh, the performance mods are then, as I said before, the 6% first 8 ally heal mods, pretty much like the 1.6 tactician build to really boost that ally heal. Uh, and that's pretty much what I'm using for the gear. The, uh, the M4s that I have, the weapons, they're also not that different. They're basically the same ones that I used with the Reclaimer build as well. Both of them have talented and competent, and then one of the weapons has determined in the free slot, and the other one has responsive. Now, I mostly use the one with determined to get my ult back as fast as possible, but there are situations where responsive can give me a lot more value. For example, if we have some guy pushing up on us or running in between us with some Nomad build, everybody's trying to focus him down. This is where I would swap to the responsive weapon. Uh, the 10% is not going to be that much, uh, especially not on a healer build. 
but it is better than nothing. Skills are, of course, the first aid defibrillator and then also the support station. Even though this isn't a reclaimer station, it is still pretty good for the bleed removal, for the immunity, for the burst heal if you blow it up, and of course for triage. So the station is definitely something that you still want to keep running. Uh, and then the talents that I have on this healer build are also pretty standard. I have triage, critical save, combat medic, and strike back. Nothing more to say that I haven't already said in other videos either. Now I did also consider going for a chain reaction because of course I'm uh, playing with a final measure build and I'm gonna get a lot of frag grenades back so you would expect that with all these frag grenades I'm gonna be able to hit multiple players with those a lot and I'm gonna get a lot of value out of this talent. Uh, but I wouldn't really go as far as to actually spec one of my talents towards the grenades because if you're fighting good groups or if you're fighting the whole server, uh, a lot of those people are usually also already running with their own final measure build. If they don't, then of course you could get a lot of value, but versus better players, you'll usually see that they are running a final measure as well. So yeah, uh, you're actually not going to get that much value out of this talent at the moments where it actually matters. So that's why I went with crit save instead, because that still gives me a lot of value a lot of time. It can actually save my life, it actually has multiple times already. Now one thing that I also want to mention about this build so that you don't go in blindly, is that I do not think that the final measure build as a solo healer is a very good idea. Not even when you build it like I did with 9000 of the main sets and electronics and then skill power on the backpack. That's still not enough to get this to work as a, as a solo healer. I think that this build is best used right besides a reclaimer healer. This is because of two things. First up, obviously, the final measure has a lot of synergy with the reclaimer because it will defuse most of the EMP grenades that others will throw at you or throw on top of the station to, to disrupt it basically, which then not only prevents that, but also gives you and the whole team more skill power and really forces the opponents to start running EMP stickies, which your reclaimer can then play around again if he is good enough at least. But the main reason why you also can't really play this build as a solo healer is because you don't really have a lot of self-sustain with this build. Although the defibrillator does scale reasonably well with the ally heal performance mods and with the skill power, it actually barely heals yourself up for a third of your health because the self-heal on the defibrillator is actually so bad. With patch 1.8, stamina got buffed, everybody received more health as a result of it, everybody got more health as a base, and people started specking more into stamina. And that's all fine, you know, it added more build diversity, but the healing skills, they did not skill with them. So the healing skills, they actually got nerfed a bit. Uh, and with the self-heal here on the defibrillator, that's where you really start to notice this, because you're popping the heal for yourself and then almost nothing happens. Of course, the very last thing that you want to do is constantly having to pop medkits and support stations just to heal yourself up, uh, but you still kind of want to be in the front of the fight to defuse the nades for the for the DPS players that are trying to kill other players meanwhile. So ideally, with this build, you will need some other way to keep yourself up other than your own station and medkits. And the main source of healing should be coming from another healer, in our case the Reclaimer healer, which then shows up with his very strong station. That is actually how we mainly run it in the group as well. We have one Reclaimer healer that focuses on the station, one Final Measure healer that focuses on the ally heal and the group buffs, and then two DPS builds for the remaining two players. That's also why on the Reclaimer build I had Overdose instead of Defibrillator, because different Defibrillator first aids they can override each other. And because the Reclaimer build was equipped with uh, support station range performance mods and not first aid ally heal mods, I didn't want to override the stronger Defibrillator from the final measure with the weaker Defibrillator from the Reclaimer build. But I think I explained all of that stuff in the Reclaimer video as well, so uh, yeah, let's, let's move on. We were going to talk about final measure. What are the biggest strengths of the final measure in the squad? Well, obviously, the 40% damage buffs, they're pretty insane, and even though you don't proc the 40% armor buff as often, uh, there are times when you do get it, and then it allows even the squishiest players on the team to just face trade for 6 or 7 seconds without the fear of dying too much. These group-wide buffs, as I said before, they easily make up for the damage that another striker or another predator player in your team would have given you instead. Because not only are you giving everybody damage buffs or everybody stamina buffs, but you're also healing up your full-on damage dealers more, which means that they can face straight for longer and thus do more damage as well. I also think that the fact that the defused grenades go into your inventory is very, very undervalued. Uh, this basically gives you an almost infinite supply of frag and shock grenades, because those are the type of grenades that everybody will keep throwing your way, even if you have the final measure. Uh, basically, the more the enemy tosses them your way, the more buffs you're gonna get, and the more you can also toss back at them. And if you are in an organized group, you can also very heavily abuse this as well. We sometimes start a fight just throwing a few grenades at others, just to check if they have final measure. 
If they have final measure, then of course we don't throw grenades and we play it the normal way. But if they do not have final measure, well that's jackpot because we all just grab grenades, we all just throw them their way, they drown in grenades, they get staggered, they get stunned. And then that results in a lot of free kills, but it also uh, brings a lot of frustration to the other players. You know, they're respawning, they're thinking, ah, fucking nade spammers, we got killed by the stupid nades again. And out of frustration, the other players oftentimes try to return the favor and spam nades back at you. At which point, because we have a final measure, we of course immediately get the damage buff and then get more nades to drown them in grenades again. Having a final measure in your squad basically enables your team to get so many cheap and cheesy staggers and stunts that often result in free kills and you basically deny other players from being able to do the same thing back to you. That is why final measure is so good right now. You can force a certain playstyle upon the other players because they're not allowed to use grenades. They're forced to just work with their guns, but at the same time, they have to be extremely careful because if they don't have a final measure themselves as well then they still have to deal with four players throwing grenades their way final measure is very much the anti-cheese part of the squad and the cheese part of the squad at the same time because running a final measure prevents getting killed in a cheesy way and it punishes people for trying to kill you in cheesy ways but at the same time you can also kill others in cheesy ways if they do not run a final measure as well if you want the whole build, it's very similar to the Reclaimer overview. Almost identical, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but for those that want it, there's also a downloadable version in the description box down below. And as always, that's going to be all for me today. I will see you guys later. Or like they say in the Netherlands, see you later.